Are you about ready? Why are you hand cranking this? The battery in my drill went dead. So now I have to hand crank. I hate these stupid leveling jacks. I want the electric leveling jacks. I just want to be able to go press a button and have my leveling jacks go down. And I'm Joe. And we're two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds. We realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new adventure. Now, Joe, whether it is behaving like an adult, just acting right. I mean, nobody has ever accused us of being stable. <laughs> we put the can crazy. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of Upgrading Eleanor. Now, if you're new to our channel, this is a series where we are basically upgrading Eleanor to be the perfect RV. Yeah, she was pretty good when we got her. Yeah, but there's always little things that you'd like to enhance, make better. So if you're new, our first step was steps. changing out our steps. Yeah. Step two was changing out our refrigerator. I can't imagine anything being more funner and awesomer than changing out the refrigerator. Yeah. Well, I've got a better one. You do? At least this one's good for me because it's great when it comes to tear down and set up. Okay. And that is the stabilizer jacks. Yes. So when we went to the Florida RV Super Show. That was a dream of yours. Um, we went through and had a list of, I want to do this to my RV. And one of them was putting electric stabilizer jacks. So we reached out to Rec Pro, and Rec Pro has graciously given us a discount on getting a set of electric stabilizer jacks. Thanks, guys, because, yeah, we definitely needed them. Yeah, so we are really excited about this. Now, nothing wrong with the other ones, but just electric ones are going to make it a little bit easier. Now, we are having a problem with one of ours that needs to be replaced, which is kind of like what spawned the whole thing. Like, if I'm going to change it, you might as well change just it to what it I all. really want. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the other ones, I have to rely on a drill, which means I have to make sure my battery is charged. And then sometimes they get stuck and you got to pull out the tool. So I like the fact that I have one button. Yeah. It's going to do the front and one button that's going to do the back. And like anybody can just press the button and Done. stabilize the RV. Yeah, because I always wonder, like, when you're cranking it up and down it's like oh how many more times do we have left in that thing because yeah. it it looks a little bit rusty just at the point where you're using your yeah. drill well it is really hot out here it is. are you gonna help do this uh no what do you mean no yeah i can help with this one we have to drill holes into the bottom of the rv oh no i take that back i'm out so in today's video we're going to show you how to take off the old stabilizer jacks which you could actually use this video if you just want to change your current ones but we're also gonna show you how to put in an electric stabilizer jack. Okay, we're gonna start off in the back since the front stabilizer jacks are down since we're parked here in the driveway. And uh, we're at a slight slope, so I figured let's get the back ones done. It's easier, and then I can show you what the front looks like when it's all completed. It's gonna be the same exact process for both the front and the back. Now, step one is gonna be get these old stabilizer jacks off. Looks like it's gonna be a pretty easy installation. Uh, now this is hold on with just a couple of little self tappers and then one extra bolt. Now our actual stabilizer system has some extra rods in it. These were an add on that was actually already on the rig when we bought her. And uh, basically what it is, is it attaches here and then it attaches up there. And it's supposed to make the rig a little bit more stable because you've got this extra rod coming down to the bottom. Uh, and then you have to tighten these. We don't even really use them that much, so it doesn't really bother me. We're not going to be having them anymore. Now, again, you can see that this stabilizer jack is slightly bent, which is why I wanted to get this one done, just in case it rains and I can't get to the front today. Now, looking at taking them off, we just have a couple of little self-tapping bolts over here. And then over here on this side, there's a couple more self-tappers and then another bolt here that comes all the way through. And then again, we have this rod. Now, I'm actually not gonna take the rod off of the rig yet. I'm gonna disconnect it from here and see how everything lines up and if I can use this on the new jack. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the stabilizer jack and you can see it's one big piece and it comes in a giant box. Now when you order it, there's no difference between the front or the back. This one is gonna go here in the back, but there's no difference, but you are only getting one. So if you need to do your front and your back, you have to order two of them. Now over on this side, we do have the whole motor piece over there on the end and here is the wire. And then it also comes with a switch, which we'll show you how to install this. Since I'm doing this by myself, I don't have anybody to hold the whole stabilizer assembly in place while I'm bolting it in. So I started thinking the easiest way to do this is to actually extend the stabilizer. So all I'm gonna do is hook it up to a battery and that will allow me to extend the stabilizers all the way down as if it was like in the fully deployed position. Then I can slide it under the rig and while it's standing in the right spot, just be able to bolt it in. Now it's really easy to actually deploy it. All you're gonna do is take this wire right here that's on the motors and we're gonna hook it up to our battery. If you go red to the red, the positive on your battery and black to the ground or to your car chassis, that's going to extend the whole stabilizer system. If you reverse it, that will actually make it collapse again. Okay, so we have it slid into place. Now what we're gonna do is just try to line up the holes. It does look like there is a hole right here that hopefully will line right up with that bolt, but we're gonna have to check on the other side first. So looking over here on the other side, it does look like when we raise it up, it's gonna be the perfect distance to come right into this beam. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bolt in on the other side and see how it goes. Okay, this is an awkward angle, but uh, we've run into a little bit of a problem. Glad Rachel's not here. Let me show you what's going on. So this beam right here, this holds your bumper on. So you can see right here, this is here, and then here's the bracket to hold the bumper on. Well, over on the other side, it is centered on the I-beam. So you can see here's your I-beam, which is the main beam for the trailer. And then this is tacked onto here. Well, it's pushed over this way just a little bit. And what that means is, is when we raise this jack up, there's no way to get into these holes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another beam right over here and then be able to kind of, it'll rest on this one and then be bolted into the other one. So I gotta go to the store. So I ran to Home Depot and I got a piece of angle steel. So we're gonna cut this down to the right size and we're gonna tack it on under the trailer on the frame. Now the actual stabilizer is gonna bolt into this but it's also gonna be resting on part of that one beam I was showing you. I just don't have enough room for the actual holes in there. Okay, so here's our angle iron. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this on right here we're gonna tack a couple of bolts through and then we're also gonna weld it, but I'm not a great welder. That's why we're gonna put a couple bolts in as well. So I cut the angle piece and I installed it and I thought I had the camera running, but I didn't. So let me show you what I did. So basically what I did was I put the angle piece up against the tube that's holding the bumper on and I put two bolts through there, nice and tight, not going anywhere. Now you can see here's the other side. And then after that, I did a little bit of welding. Now I know just enough welding to be dangerous. So we have a weld there and then underneath we did do some welding. So it's not very pretty, but it will hold. And then again, we have the bolts as well. So I put some paint on there to protect it. We're gonna let that paint dry. While we're doing that, I'm gonna start running the wire. Now we have to run the power and uh, we need power both the front and the back since we're putting stabilizers on both the front and the back. So there's a few ways we can do this. We could tap into the battery for the front and then tap into like the breaker panel in the back, or we could just run one wire, which is what I'm gonna do. So I've got this nice thick gauge wire and I'm using a thicker gauge on purpose just because it's gonna be a long run. We're going to tap in up here on the front and just run the wire all the way down and then we're gonna put fuses before each one of the stabilizer jacks. So we're gonna tap into the battery right here on this fuse, but we're gonna put it before the fuse since we have another fuse that's gonna be on all of the different stabilizer jacks. Okay, now that the paint is dry, we can go ahead and tack up this side and then finish up all the wiring for the back.
Okay, got this side in. We're gonna go ahead and tap on the other side and then we can test it. It is starting to get dark out because I'm doing a million things at one time. Aside from this, we also had to film some videos for our keto channel. Uh, but we do have the stabilizer jack in. We've run the wire to the back and we still have to do the front, but we're gonna finish up the back first. We need to mount this switch. So I'm gonna mount the switch right into this metal flashing here because over here, we can get to it on the other side for all the wires. If we put it up here in the fiberglass, number one, we have to worry about like delamination, that kind of stuff, making sure it's sealed right. But also then we're gonna have to run wires down through the floor. It's just better to do it right here. So we're gonna mount the switch right about here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go measure this out. We're gonna cut a square just a tiny bit bigger than this. So pretty much like that and put it in there. There is a sealant in here, but again, this is just a metal flashing on the outside. So we don't have to worry about if water gets in there, it's still on the outside. It's not going into the rig. Okay, time to wire it up. So they did supply us with one of these 20 amp breakers. So we're gonna put the gold side or whatever you wanna call this, the brass color. That's gonna go to the battery. The switch is gonna go to this. Now here we have our switch. Now there are no instructions for this. I had to look it up. So here's what you're gonna do. So the black, that goes to the chassis or to the battery. The red goes to the battery. Then we have the blue and the red those are gonna go to the actual jack. And what'll happen is, is basically all the switch does is reverse it back and forth. So if you again would have the red touching the red, that would make it go up. If you have the red touching the black on the stabilizer jack, that's gonna make it go down. Okay, so the switch is wired up to the battery. I'll show you how I did that. Now they did not supply me with any screws for this, which is kind of weird. So I'll just use a couple of stainless steel screws. Uh, but before I show you the other side, I just wanna show you, you have two wires left. You have a yellow wire and a blue wire. The yellow wire is gonna go to the black on the stabilizer jack, and then the blue wire is gonna go to the red on the stabilizer jack. So you can see here on the inside, we put uh, the circuit breaker up there. We've got, here's our ground. We'll go ahead and heat shrink all of this. This is going back to the battery. We'll tie all of this up with zip ties once we're all done. And we're just gonna go ahead and do the heat shrink on those two wires. Okay, all wired up. Moment of truth. Go ahead and retract. It works! Extend. Okay, last thing to do here in the back is just tidy up these wires a little bit and put a couple of screws into the switch. So the back is all done. Now it is dark out. So we're gonna go ahead and just clean everything up. I'm gonna do the front tomorrow morning before we leave on our trip. It really doesn't take that long. And I did measure the front. So we're not gonna have the same issue like we had to do the welding in the back. I know it seems like in this video, it's taking a lot longer because we started it in the middle of the day and now it's nighttime. It's just that I got distracted with other projects. We were filming videos. I had to go to the store, but the actual work itself, I've got maybe 45 minutes into this, you know, and that includes having to cut that, you know, piece of angle and weld it on. And again, not a great welder. So this isn't as big of a job as it seems. It just happens to be that somebody welded that one beam in the wrong spot. It's just about a half an inch over on the wrong side. So we're gonna clean up and then tomorrow I'll come back and I'll put the front on, which I've already measured. We're not gonna have the same kind of issue. Well, good morning. We're gonna finish up doing the stabilizer jacks because we're heading on a trip right now to Kelly Park in just five hours. So I better get these jacks going. We're gonna do the front right now. So the front went in with no problem. Everything lined up perfectly on the main frame of the RV. 
that really makes me believe that in the back it's supposed to line up and it was just that whoever put on the bumper that one rail they just mounted it a little bit over to the side i really believe it was supposed to be centered on the i-beam because it's very weird i've actually looked at a couple of other ones and they are centered so i think mine was just put in wrong but no problem we fixed it all we have to do now is just put in the little switch here and finish everything up Okay, we're all done. Everything went in smoothly in the front. The entire installation in the front took about 30 minutes, so definitely not bad. The only reason this whole installation took longer than it should have was because of the issue in the back where that beam wasn't right. But other than that, this is maybe an hour to an hour and a half installation. So it is 1230 right now. Rachel's going to be home in about an hour and a half, and we're heading out to Kelly Park up in Apopka, Florida. So I'm going to go pack and take a shower and we'll wrap this whole video up once we get up to Apopka. Okay, we made it. Actually, we've been here for three days, but this <laughs> is the first sun that we have seen. Yeah, we got up here on Sunday evening. It was a little dark to film, and then Monday morning we got up, we ran over to another park to meet our son and his wife. And then pouring. And then it poured. So we haven't had an opportunity to film the final, like what happened with these stabilizer jacks. So let's go ahead and show you because I'm really impressed with these. Me too. So we put a set of stabilizer jacks in the front and in the back. Each one has their own a control panel so this is the back one and all you're going to do is press the extend button even i can do that so one thing you're going to notice is we have the stabilizer pads on this side but not the other side and that's so you can see that when it hits on the one side the other side continues to go down until it hits and then it doesn't matter if you're on uneven ground now to retract them all you have to do is press the retract button they'll come up and then once they get up to the top and you hear that like you know the they can't go any further, go ahead and stop it. You don't want to let it keep going because otherwise it will end up, you know, uh, burning out the motor. So I know this is a silly little upgrade, but Not it silly. saves a couple of minutes. Well, and I like that I can participate in it too. It's super easy to use mm -hmm. and I can just help us get set up that much faster. Yeah. Now, if you're worried about maybe the motor going out or you lose battery power for something, there is on the other side a place where you can just hook up a little half inch rod and that will manually crank it down. Kind of like getting the tire from underneath your truck or even just lifting up any kind of normal bottle jack. So there is a way to operate it yeah. without having any battery power. I like that there's a backup plan because <laughs> I don't want us to install something and then if for some reason we lose power, we can't manually crank it down. Yeah. But overall, very easy installation. If you didn't have to do that little bit of extra welding I did, you're talking about maybe an hour if you're swapping out your old ones to your new ones. Again, even the welding thing wasn't that big of a deal. And if you can't weld, you could just bolt on just like I did. But I think most RVs are not even going to need that. It should line up perfectly with the frame of your camper. Just go ahead and measure it. Now, again, if you are interested in these jacks, we got them from Rec Pro. I'm going to leave a link down below. Now, if you use that link, you will get 5% off of your purchase. We did pay for this set of jacks and Rec Pro gave us a discount so that we could do this video, which we greatly appreciate. Yes, thank you. So use that link down below if you're interested in them or any other type of upgrade for your RV. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, make sure you hit that like button down below because it really lets us know what type of content you're looking for. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell button and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, happy, happy camping. camping.